Let's get more on the potential impacts of bank fallout uh, with Jens Nordvig, the founder and CEO of Exante Data. Uh, Jens, great to have you with us. Are we witnessing a, a banking crisis unfold either here in the United States or in Europe? Well, so it started with one bank, then we had two banks, and now we have three. And uh, I think it's very important to think about what type of bank it is that we are looking at, right? So we had regional banks in the U.S. That's where we had the two U.S. examples, right? But the news today is around uh, one of the biggest global investment banks. So we're in a total different category of, of banking institution here, right? In order to contain this, we need to have it not spread, right? So we need to watch extremely carefully whether this is something that is contaminating all the big investment banks, right? So we were watching it on the screen, right? Big French banks were down 10, 12 percent today at some point. That's not what you want to see. If we look at CDS, i.e. sort of the, the what's going on in credit, it was a little bit less dramatic. But we're just on the cusp of this to looking into sort of a more systemic crisis, right? That's why people are getting memories from 2008 today. And that's what is making it so dramatic. Yeah, we're showing the CDS on the individual banks uh, skyrocketing, particularly for Credit Suisse. Um, but in terms of, of saying things like, well, we have to make sure it doesn't spread. And I mean, that's that's fine, but we don't really know what it is that will spread. And so therefore, what is the mechanism by which it will spread? There's a lot we don't know yet, Jens, for us to sort of digest. So it's easier to shoot first and ask questions later, which is sort of what we're seeing unfold in the markets. Or are there things that you are looking for in particular to tip you off? So whether or not this is truly uh, some sort of systemic crisis that we're facing in Europe. And, and could that yeah, so then translate or, or, or come to our shores? Yeah, so um, uh, I, I think one indicator that we've learned to look at is um, what is essentially the price of dollar funding for global players, right? If there is a shortage of dollars in the market like we had in 2008, the price of dollar funding goes up dramatically and that scares a lot of people, right, because a lot of people have dollar assets that they need to fund. If they can't fund them, they're in serious trouble. So we started to see some movement today. It's not uh, as much as it was in the COVID shock. It's certainly not as much as it was in 2008. But that is what is really scaring people. That's why the euro traded down almost 2% today, right? That is the sort of first signal that is global systemic tension. So we need to watch those indicators incredibly carefully. So on the one hand, we have that. On the other hand, I look at the CDS for BNP uh, and all the big uh, European banks, right? And it moved, but it was not super dramatic. So we're just at the cusp. We need to be very pragmatic. And the ECB has a very difficult decision tomorrow. Do they do 50 basis points and ignore the financial stability concerns? Or, or do they say, OK, we actually have to prioritize the financial stability concerns ahead of the inflation? So very, very difficult situation. It's the same for the Fed, right? We're at a point in time where we have inflation above target. It's not so easy just to focus on the banks as it was in the other cycles where we had no inflation problem to speak of. Yeah, and it's Tim, but you know, the crisis of confidence, you know, back to Europe, it, in 2011, 2012, I mean, the European sovereign debt crisis was something that was really about a crisis of confidence. And if we think about the velocity of the Fed move, Bund rates, 10-year Bund rates were minus 70 bips less than two years ago. Uh, they went up to 275. I mean, the velocity of that move is even more extreme than it's gone on in the United States. And if we actually are seeing some type of, of uh, the type of volatility that we're seeing and the dollar funding stress you're talking about, um, that dollar rally, which was a wrecking ball all the way to October of last year, may get going again. And it's not been my base view, but I have to say uh, I'm very concerned by the move in the dollar in the last couple of days. And for risk assets, it's an awful backdrop. I, th I think in, we have an incredible tension right between the economic data that has looked very, very strong up until very recently, right? And the Fed is looking at that. Their models is based on that. And then you have the financial side of the economy that looks like something extremely bad is happening, right? How do they balance that? It's a much tougher balance that we've seen for 30 years, right? Because inflation is above the target. In the past, they just said, oh, we don't have much inflation. Every time there's financial instability, we just cut rates, generate liquidity. Much, much harder right now. Uh, Jens, Karen, do you have any sense of how much counterparty risk some of the major U.S. banks would have to Credit Suisse? Obviously, I know, it, you know, things spread, but just isolating that. It's such a weird situation, right, because uh, Credit Suisse has had bad headlines around its name for so long. It is not something that's popping out of the blue 
uh, as some would argue, the regional bank crisis in the U.S. was. So from that perspective, I think regulators knows what's going on with Credit Suisse. All the different risk managers at the big investment banks know how to manage their risk. So I think it has more to do with the question of whether it really has sovereign backstop. Is uh, the Swiss National Bank going to come in and provide liquidity or not? Or are they willing to create losses uh, on the creditors within the Credit Swiss balance sheet? If that's the case, we're going to have real credit contagion. So the Swiss National Bank has to make a big decision, and it has to be by tomorrow. By tomorrow. All right. Jens, thank you. Jens Nordvig, Exante Data. But that question, Karen, goes right to we don't know what we don't know. Right. So how concerned are you in terms of unknown or undisclosed counterparty risk uh, you know, at some of the banks that you hold? Well, it would be idiotic to dismiss it, right? Um, yeah. Uh, the, there is this credit uh, CVA which tries to ascertain credit party risk, but you can't really know. So, you know, I've made the bet that J.P. Morgan and Bank Americas of the world are, are, I mean, will they trade down? Yes. But in terms of the contagion affecting them, I think not. But it's hard to say that's no, I wouldn't say that's not possible. You know what's fascinating is that for all the, the, the chaos we've been through in the last 15 years, and we've mm -hmm. gone through it on this show, I've had more people in the last three days ask me if their bank account deposits were safe. And, and, yeah. and, and it's extraordinary. Because if you think about the stress that we really haven't felt yet um, in banks and in credit, and yet this is where the prevailing public concern is, and I'm getting this, you know, this is from all every, the people, everyone has a all bank the people account. you'd expect everyone to hear has from. a bank account. When you when the financial crisis was built on things that people couldn't understand, I was on that floor when we sold. We had rolling closes. People didn't understand what was actually happening when financials were collapsing. Now people understand. Hey, I have a bank account. Is it going to be there tomorrow? Yeah, tangible.